we now have our, our last performer. You might be familiar, you might have seen him 10 minutes ago. Make some noise for Kevin Key! <laughs> This is so exciting. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we have a full house tonight. Nobody look around to check. Just believe me. Uh, I always love doing these shows because I get to perform for literally, I know everybody in this crowd uh, personally, except for Ellie's parents for some reason. <laughs> a little bit about me. My name's Kevin Keen, like he just said. Uh, I'm dyslexic, and if you're wondering, that's like, it's not, not funny yet, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> I am dyslexic, and if you're wondering what that's like, my biggest fear is probably watching a child get kidnapped, and then I have to read the license plate on a van as it drives away. <laughs> because not many people are looking out for an Amber Alert on a Subaru with license plate Z59 Peace Sign Swastika, so... <laughs> that kid's not going home. <laughs> Guys, I'm angry about everything all the time. Nobody's patient anymore. As you can imagine, I, I go to a lot of stand-up shows, and every time they end, the second they end, everybody in the crowd gets up, and they run to the door. Where are you going? I literally guarantee you that this second row of fuck-ass dudes right here, the second this show ends, they're going to get up and run to the door. And they have nowhere to go. They spent the, their last three dollars on this stupid comedy show. Then they're going back to the door to drink, and that's it. And I know this because they're my friends and I'm going with them. <laughs> it's kind of, it's the same vibe as when people don't like it when babies cry on airplanes. That's fucking all babies do, I feel like. I, like, also, airplanes are scary, by the way. Imagine the first time you got in a metal tube and it fucking lifted into the sky. And you know we don't know how airplanes fly. We know that they're all looking like I'm getting there. We know, we know that the wings generate lift and that makes them fly, but engineers don't have a commonly used equation for that. So we're just kind of fucking winging it. We don't know. That's scary as fuck. That's terrifying. Let that baby cry. I feel like they have every right. My sister's impatient. I immediately, I'm sorry, I immediately had to look to my friends because I said my sister and I was terrified. But, uh, my sister's impatient. Recently, I went to the train station to pick her up after work because I am God's gift to her. And I was driving her home and we came to a left turn. And I'm a patient driver. So I was waiting there and after a few minutes, because there were a lot of cars going past, she said, Jesus Christ, Kevin, just make the turn. This is taking forever. You know what takes forever? A coma after you get T-boned by a semi truck, Shannon. <laughs> I want to get in a fight so badly. <laughs> so badly. Which is insane. Because I recognize that I look like the kind of guy that when a fight breaks out, I kind of pull like a, guys, this isn't you. <laughs> but I, I want to get in a fight so bad. And I think every guy does, right? We all want to. Which is, which is insane. I, I think it's a thing we all do. Or also, something we all do. When we're in class and we zone out, we all think about what we would do if an arm intruder broke in, right? That is a thing we do. And if you don't believe me, anytime you see a guy zone out during the show, look over at him. And I guarantee he is thinking, all right, so if he comes in through that door, and I'll probably beat, crack the gun. You're a cop side major. No, you're not. You're dying immediately. And you know what? How dare I assume that I would be any help if there was an intruder? What, what would I do? Tell him a joke? He comes in with a gun, I'm like, wait, what do? So I'm dyslexic. <laughs> he put a bullet between my eyes. I visited my grandparents recently. <laughs> I also wrote most of these jokes today, so the transitions are a little iffy. Uh, uh, I was down in South Carolina visiting them, and they're getting kind of old, so most of the visits are just kind of... Should I just give up on the mic? Yeah. 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 Okay. What? So most of the visits... <laughs> mo most of the visits to them in the old folks' home was just kind of helping them out. And while I was down in South Carolina, I called my grandmother, who we call Emma, and I don't know why, and I said, how are you? And she said, I'm great. I said, that's wonderful. How's grandpa? And she said, he's good. He's napping. I said, wonderful. And she said, yeah, and he's holding the baby. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm the youngest person in our family, 
and you live in a retirement home where nobody's under 70. So where the fuck did Grandpa get a baby? I said he better not be holding a baby because he stole it. And you know what? <laughs> you know what? I visited them several times after that. I, I feel like I'm being told. I visited them several times after that, and I never saw a baby. But I can't really confirm that that day my grandpa wasn't holding a baby. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe you don't. <laughs> That's fine. But I know what I mean. And a few days after that phone call, by the way, I went and I visited. I was helping my grandpa with his computer because he was broken, and by broken, it, I mean he forgot to press the fucking power button. And I was helping with it, and we were looking for a file. And we found it, and I said, this is the file. And he said, yeah. And then he turned to me and he said, also, where are those voices coming from? <laughs> I said, what the fuck is that? Because <laughs> I've seen the visit, and those grandparents put the kids in the oven immediately. <laughs> I was not playing any games. And you know what? It turns out we have a microphone that connects to his hearing aid so that he can hear people better than the other room, and that's what he heard. But that's what will have him believe. I, again, cannot prove that that is what voices he was hearing. So I didn't visit them again after that. I haven't seen them since. You know what that story makes me think of? Condoms. Uh, uh, the CVS in my hometown locks up condoms now behind those fucking like glass doors for some reason. And I'm not sure, what are they protecting us from? A good time, dude? Come here. Uh, no, I'd imagine that they're locking them up so that guys like me stop using so many, right? Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, but I did, I tried to buy, I tried to buy condoms recently, and I went in and I pressed the button, and a girl my age walked over, who I went to high school with, because God hates me, and she said, can I help you? And I said, I sure hope so. <laughs> Which is probably the creepiest thing I could have said to the girl I was buying condoms from. And I said, no, yeah, I just need some condoms. And she went, sure. And like, she didn't believe that I needed condoms. What the, and, okay, are those condoms sitting in my dorm room unopened? I don't think that's relevant to the story. <laughs> I don't think that's important. And sometimes, as a stand-up comedian, you're kind of, you, you, you get these opportunities to do something funny. And because of that, I was sitting there, and I had to contemplate whether or not I asked this girl working minimum wage what the biggest condoms they sold were. <laughs> I didn't do that. Don't worry. I was honest with her. So I'm, I'm walking to the cash register with my extra small condoms. <laughs> and I googled, actually, why they lock up the condoms now. And apparently, it's because young people, when they need condoms, are too embarrassed to go up to the cashier, so they'll just steal them instead. Which is preposterous to me, because when I buy condoms, I walk up to the cash register like I'm an astronaut in a movie, <laughs> I'm about to get on a spaceship. Except instead of a rocket, I'm walking to like, the most disappointing sex a woman's ever had. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Kevin Key. And <laughs>